How's it going guys? So if you are seeing this, that means I was able to make some kind of progress in Blender. Blender is a 3D software, Create you can pretty much create anything you want, think about. I have background in videography, video editing, um, After Effects, Premiere, those, you know, those programs. So Blender was a completely new thing for me. Um, so I wouldn't call this video a tutorial by any means. I'm gonna show some of the things I've learned, some small things that I've learned um, that might help someone but the major part of this video is showing where I've gotten in roughly a month, three weeks or so, month time from literally only opening the program like twice in my life before that, not even, to now I'm opening it every single day. I'm still learning to this day, honestly. So here we are in Blender. This is what it looks like when you open it up on really any version. I think the newest version right now is 3.2, 3.1, something like that when I'm filming this. The first thing I had to learn is how to move in Blender. <laughs> Cause like when you just hit your left mouse button, it's it's your select. You can't just like click left mouse button and move. It's your center scroll wheel. You gotta hit the center scroll wheel and then move your mouse. And you can spin around in any, any direction you want. You can do control center mouse scroll wheel button and you can go forward and backwards just by moving your mouse forward and backwards, or you do shift and scroll wheel button press down and you kind of move in a, in a side to side, left to right motion or, or up to up and down Z axis or X axis, I believe. And then to move on the Y axis would be control and center mouse button. Center scroll wheel is your best friend in this program I've learned. So if you don't have, a, if you have a mouse that doesn't have a center scroll wheel, there are hotkeys. Um, like if you hit a key, if you hit Z, it changes your, your what what textures you're on, um, solids, render, you know, previews. Um, I don't know all the hotkeys, I'll be honest with you. So I can't help you there because I'm still just kind of doing it, the, the clicking and center scroll wheel and, and, and all that stuff. So when I opened Blender, I had something that I think helped me was that I had an idea of what I wanted to make. Um, for, for work. Uh, I wanted to create this animation, um, semi-realistic animation. Um, so I had to learn learn render settings and, and all that stuff over here. Um, I'm not gonna dump, jump into this because I'm still learning a lot of it, uh, but I'm figuring it out. One of the first things I wanted to do was create a city um, and I knew I wasn't gonna be able to create the city from scratch. So I found a video by CG Geek and it's called Building uh, something along the lines of building a city in 20 minutes in Blender or something like that. I'll, I'll put the thumbnail up and then I'll also put it in the description if you guys want to check it out. Pretty much what you do is you take map data, implement it on into Blender, and then it gives you variable rooftop and, and, and textures. And then you have to actually go in and, and put in the textures you want. So by doing that, I was able to create this picture right here. I was static. I was so excited about this picture when I exported it. I, I was kind of doing, putting the process on my Instagram story. I got the clouds in here, got, got brick texture, got window texture, got some sort of window texture going on over here. Uh, you can see some water over there. Like I was ecstatic that I was able to create this. Ignore that there's like carps on roofs here because one of these is like a parking garage but i think it's this one i don't know it doesn't matter i was so happy this was like so far ahead of what i thought i would be at in like a week or two but i was able to get this um ignore the clouds going to the buildings and everything i just had an export of something that i kind of wanted and then i found uh was it blender guru i believe let me see here yeah blender guru another huge follow another huge help in this process um doing like the, the donut thing and that makes sense if you've ever jumped in the blender i'm sure everyone's heard to, to do the donut course or whatever he has like a 15 part video course on youtube for free of showing you how to make a donut but that goes into like textures and 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 how to make it like the icing look drippy and adding sprinkles and and all the way up to exporting so it was awesome doing sculpting every everything it was just it was cool to kind of follow that along follow along for a couple days and learn all of that stuff again i'll put like the first one up on the screen and i'll link that down below as well so i did that i don't think i ever actually exported that donut no i did not so i can't show you what i created but i then jumped into just i felt like i knew enough 
in Blender at that point how to how to move objects and, and, and create shapes and, and doing all that stuff. So I went on and I started creating like actual landmarks, I guess you would call them, from the city that I am trying to create. So I started building this arena here, the front of the arena, you can see it here. This is exported in EV, and you'll learn there's two different exports. EV has more of that like Animal Crossing, you, some people might have heard, look to it cartoonish game style. So the, the glowing looks a lot more glowy, textures don't look as real, but they, they're still there. So that was that picture that I created. Um, and then I exported it in Cycles, which is the more realistic. See, the windows aren't as, as glowy. Lights make our actual lights. Like over here, I'm pointing at my screen. I know that's not helping. So like that was exciting for me because I created that literally from scratch. I opened up, got this cube. See, I just tried to move with the, without the scroll wheel. I opened up this cube and that I created that from scratch. Um, I also created uh this this bridge texture which i didn't the, so there's that that's again from that city video i showed you guys earlier i wasn't liking how some of these textures were coming out i started learning about texture layering that there was another video i can't remember who i watched i think it was a blender guru video as well about like layering textures to make them look more real having like like when you open up a texture file. All right, sorry about that guys. I don't know how long the camera was out. So hopefully it wasn't out too long. I was just trying to open things, didn't see the camera died. So we're back. Um, so like I was saying, when you open up a texture file, when you download an actual like Blender, like 4K, as you see here, this is Brick 0011 4K. You get all these like different textures of the the brick and what that does is helps you get depth and, and, and style and an actual texture look to the brick so you learn how to import these properly so yes that's the that's the texture stuff so i was learning that being able to give the textures to things um and then i started creating uh my room setup this this desk setup that you're looking at literally right now um I mean, you guys can't really see much of it, but creating the, the, the chair, the, the, the monitors, the lights, I have two lights here. Um, these orange lights that you're seeing, like creating all of that in Blender from scratch. There was another video. I'll put the what one I watched up on the screen here now. But what I was able to create was this right here. This is my setup. Still very raw, but you can see lights down here my camera bag over here the chair i'm sitting in this is literally what i'm looking at right now that even this this like starbucks cup is is up here it's it's literally right here so my drives camera everything and i actually did record some video of me it'll just be like time lapsed of me creating this so i'll put that in now um, but nothing too crazy. I mean, like even this, this the, the, the Oculus headset, it's, it's right here. Um, and I have it sitting where it is behind the drives that are over here. So I was like, it was super cool to like take a couple days and just create this. I really learned a lot of things, how to create the ring light with the lights and adding the, 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 the these orange lights that you see down here. Um, that, I don't know if I can get this high enough that are like these little spotlights and then having them go up on the wall here. Like it was a super cool to learn how to do that. So that took a couple days, maybe a week to create just to trial and error, bring in, learn how to bring in my actual mouse pad and all that stuff. So that's like, we're what, two and two and a half weeks into Blender at that point. So I, after about two weeks, I created that taking my time trying not to get frustrated but i got so when i tell you i got so frustrated there were so many days that i felt so defeated i wasn't going to be able to figure out how to do this because coming from uh video editing and even photo editing it's a whole different platform it's way different different keys different the ways how to do things and it was just so crazy to like feel to learn had to sit there and learn this stuff when I've been doing video editing for so long. So I'm going to go into why I'm not opening up those projects for you guys to see right here, right now. I am actually in, let me, let me close Blender and reopen it. So I am not in Blender 
point whatever anymore, 3.1, 3.2. I'm actually in Blender, if you guys look right here, 2.9, it's actually 2.9, 3.0. So the reason why I'm in 2.9 and not 3.2 was I found a video by the YouTuber called Markham, I think I'm saying that, Mark OM 3D, Markham 3D. He has a video called Google Maps to Blender. So what you're able to do, like the easy way around it, um, actually, let me back up because there was one more thing. I found the Markham 3D from, I believe it's the guy's name is Ben, let me see, it's Ben something. Ben Morin, I believe it's Ben Morin. So I found this video by Ben Morin. I hope I'm saying that right. And that video is called Recreating Real Cities in Blender. And he the video opens up with this like cityscape with, with city scene with cars going and a train comes across and the, the thing follows it. It was an, I was like, that's what I want. It was nighttime, like I was like, that's what I'm looking for, for this project that I want to create. So I started watching his video and then he talks about the Markham 3D guy and how it is simple, but it's it's not simple. So I'm not gonna go into details. If you wanna learn how to do this, I would definitely go check out those videos. But pretty much you download a program called RenderDoc, but not the newest version. And then you add an, an add-on. So to add an add-on in Blender, you go down to preferences, um, add-ons, and then install. You have to install this, I think it's map, map models importer. So once you get those two things downloaded, you pretty much have to open the render doc and he goes through this on his video. You have to like create a shortcut for Google Chrome then you have to like inject render doc into your Google Chrome and then you go to Google Maps. So once you find the, the map location you want, you take like a screenshot with the render doc program and you save that and pretty much what that's doing is it's saving the Google map data. So then you can open that up in Blender by going like once you save that picture, you can go to, to import and then you get this Google map capture at the bottom. It's a, or a dot RDC that that's what the render doc program, as you see, import a capture of Google maps from <laughs> recording with render doc. So you click that, you open up the screenshot you end up with this. Now, obviously you, this is a render literally from Google Maps. So if you were to go into Google Maps or Google Earth, either one, and, and, and go into 3D space, you would see this exact same setup. Um, obviously when you, when you scroll down here, obviously you see these like bushes or trees or whatever, they, they, they don't look amazing because that is what Google Maps does. But it gave me this, for example, this one's about this blue bridge. It gave me this blue bridge texture like you guys saw that I created that I didn't like. It gives it to you with the actual textures. It gives it to you with these actual textures that, that is, is real. The windows are real or like you know, these, these textures, all this stuff is, is real. And that was exactly what I needed because I don't need anything like, I didn't need anything like crazy and the Ben Morin guy he goes into all of this detail showing you how to create these windows which is actually super easy it's just creating a, a a flat surface and then putting a glass texture on it and then to get the glowing windows you just add an admission texture um, for like a nighttime window and then when I turn on seeing lights you can see I have like some of these street lights or like it's just like a walking path light here. And then this bridge has some lights here. There's some purple lights underneath. And I add in the scene world, you get a nighttime. I'm going to my camera. To go into your camera, you hit zero. That's a little tip. Um, you get this nighttime look. And obviously it, it, once the camera starts moving, this is what I wanted. So I'm, at this point, I'm a static and I'm three weeks, maybe three and a half months. Like, I mean, this I just created like not even like like last week, I think. So um, 
and then you start learning how to keyframe. No, the, I know how to keyframe from Adobe After Effects and Adobe um, like Premiere Pro. Um, and you start keyframing these things. Um, there's so many like there's so many things adding a, a world texture or whatever, which is like this whole thing you see here, and and moving it around, and, and even creating this this river is is a texture. So if I would turn that the world off and then go back to like kind of like editing, um, slash on the number key if you've selected something, we'll put it in its own space. This is a river texture which is literally just a glass texture. So if you say, let me move this up here. If you look here, it's a glass texture with a bump node and Musgrave texture with mapping. And the mapping is only there for me to keyframe it. So when I actually hit enter, the river kind of ripples a little bit, like moving water, which the Ben Morin guy goes into that a little bit, but that's what I needed because I'm over a big river and it was phenomenal when I found that out. I was like, oh my God, I don't need a water texture. I can just do that. That's phenomenal. Hit the slash key on that again. Um, let's go back to timeline, bring this back. Okay. And you see, I have, I keyframed my camera. So can I click on my camera? Yes, I have keyframes down here for my camera and focusing and, and what else, what else did I have? It was focusing, I don't even remember what else I had. Motion blur, it was motion blur and, and, and focusing and setting my f-stop and setting my, making sure my frames are set properly, my frame rate, that's all normal camera and videography stuff. So I was, I was happy with that part. And then if I just click spacebar, you'll see that the timeline goes and you see my camera, I'm pointing at screen. My camera is this orange thing moving. This X is kind of like it's uh, it's focal point. And then you add motion blur into that. And I got my opening scene pretty much for this this little short that I'm creating for work. These are all individual windows, but what you, and the Ben guy goes into this on the video if you wanna learn this you can create like a row and then duplicate it and then just duplicate it multiple times down. Like it's not that hard. It's just getting it lined up, especially with like this building. It's, it's not square. Um, like these windows I made round on top down over here. And then obviously some are on, some are off. So when you go into the scene world texture, it looks like windows, like you know, lights are on in the building and stuff. And when you're in the camera view, you know, moving so fast, it's like, yeah. Yeah. So that's where that's at. Um, another thing for someone, if they want to learn with the, the camera. So once I click on the camera here, I'm selecting my camera. There's this add on that I found. Um, go over here, click on your cam little camera icon, camera shakeify, shakeify. I think that's what it's called. It adds exactly adds shake to the camera. So it's not so like, just kind of robotic, like one of those like arms that you see. It's very like, it moves as it's going, kind of like a drone or like, like this one's called walking the store, like someone just walking with the camera. And that adds like so, so much more depth to the, the scene. If I just play this back, this is what I got. And it was, I was ecstatic. This is 170 frames at 24, frames a second so I got about five seconds or so and that's all I needed um, I'm still figuring out exporting because that took I feel like that took this took way too long to export it was a couple hours maybe it didn't maybe that's normal I don't know I'm still learning the exporting thing but when you officially export it this is what I got I open this this is so I exported it let me back it up, back it up. I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. I'm sorry, guys. So when you export it, I did cycles, as you guys can see here, with GPU using my device. So instead of, you can use your CPU or GPU. I use my GPU. I added in all my things, resolution, frame end stop, frame rate, um, output. So this is where I was watching some videos and, and people were saying, don't, you can export as like an actual like MPEG video, but to not do that, to export either, to export as either a PNG or a JPEG, or some people were even saying TIFF or open EXR files. Um, I did TIFF file at 16 bit color depth. You end up 
with something that looks like this. Just like you would have taken like, like a stop motion kind of thing, you just end up with a bunch of frames. So I, I exported 170 frames of this export. I brought it into Premiere, added some, I don't know why I just exited that out. I brought it into Premiere, added a color grade, you know, my, my typical color grade, color grade, you know, added some coloring to it, did all the normal video stuff, added some black bars to it because I have to for, for work, the screen that is going on like a big screen and it needs to like, yeah. Um, so I wanted to see what it would look like. And this was the final product. Let's make it real big. Let me, let me turn off the camera for this. Just for a second. Five seconds, five, six seconds. I think that's what it said. Yeah, five seconds. But that, after three to four weeks, month, uh, I got what I wanted by just watching all of these videos. So I know that that video maybe was a little fat. I mean, I'm sure it's still gonna be, hopefully this isn't gonna be longer than like 10, 15 minutes, I hope. But there was a lot, a lot going on. Like I said at the beginning, this wasn't going to be a a detailed breakdown how to do everything i think what i've created in less than a month is is super cool super awesome definitely check out all the people i'm going to link below um i'm sure i'm going to link some people that i didn't talk about just because i forgot names or forgot about videos but like that's all i did i just watched all these videos all these different people on how to do this stuff and i feel like i've ended up with a awesome awesome project let me know if you guys have any questions, if you want to know anything down below. And then uh, I'm sure I'm sure I'll make other Blender videos, but if you guys want to see something in particular, let me know. Like, please let me know. And if I can't figure it out, I'm either going to learn how to figure it out, or I will talk about, link some other person who did do it, because I am a noob beginner still at this. So check, check everybody out below. Um, like, subscribe, subscribe if you want to see stuff like this and other, I mean, I am a hockey videographer and I am creating this for like a opening thing for the arena. So like, it's going to be super awesome. Um, if you want to see like behind the scenes, I plan on doing a bunch of behind the scenes stuff for my work and, and everything else. So definitely subscribe if you want, have any questions, check out the Instagram, um, at K Barley. Um, I'll even have a pop up here for you guys. Look at that. Instagram at K Barley. It's over here, right there. Yep, right there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye, guys.